So you got the news, you're moving to Metro Detroit, but it's winter time. Not sure what to do? Let's talk about what winter is really like in the Motor City. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how you doing? Derek Waranka here from M1 Realty. I'm the broker owner, founder of the company. Started this in 2014, right here in Ferndale, Michigan. And we're now the number one real estate firm in the city of Ferndale. And I've got an all-star team of agents, whether you're looking to buy, sell, invest, rent, whatever you need, we've got you covered. So let's start with what it's really like here during the winter months in Metro Detroit. So as far as vehicles are concerned, we are the Motor City. Compared with other cities, we do a really good job of keeping our streets plowed, salted. I mean, they're not perfect. When there's a heavy snowfall, it takes a little time. But generally speaking, you don't really need a four wheel drive vehicle to get around Metro Detroit in the winter time. I mean, it helps, don't get me wrong, but most cities do a pretty good job of keeping the roads plowed, keeping them salted, keeping them safe to travel on. So a normal two wheel drive car should be more than sufficient to get you where you need to go. And as far as the freeways are concerned, so MDOT handles all the freeways. Those are generally gonna be the first roads that get cleared off. They are usually out there in real time, like as we're getting a heavy snowfall, putting salt down and getting the roads plowed. And then individual cities, they're kind of hit or miss, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, the city of Detroit is going to take the longest to get streets and uh, you know plowed and salted. Uh, the reason why is that city's massive. Like you can fit all of Manhattan, San Francisco, and Boston within the Detroit city limits with room to spare. The city infrastructure is built out for 2.5 million people, and there's only 700,000 or so that live in the city. So, you know, there's a ton of streets that have to get plowed. They're gonna take the longest. Um, but as far as the suburbs go, same deal. Some cities are better than others, but generally speaking, there's not a city that you're gonna drive through where, you know, three days after a major snowfall, you're still gonna have issues with the roads. They're, at that point, will be, you know, at least plowed to the point where you can pass them. Number two, you definitely want to add commuting time or travel time when there's gonna be a heavy snowfall. Um, you know, travel time is gonna take a lot longer depending on how much snow we get. So even when the roads are being plowed and salted, you wanna add at least two to three times what your normal commute would take because you know, in a really heavy snowfall event, like you're gonna be going like 10 or 15 miles an hour. So you just have to be prepared for that. Just be patient, give yourself enough time don't do anything dumb because even when the you know the roads are salted, they're plowed, they can still be really slippery in spots if you're not careful. Number three, so for your home, you're gonna wanna make sure to invest in a good snow blower or a good snow shovel, have plenty of salt or ice melt on hand. Like everybody sells that stuff. You can go to Target or CVS or you know a hardware store or wherever and get, you can either get rock salt or different kinds of ice melter. There's like other like pet friendly ice melters that they don't work quite as good, but they're obviously better for your pets. But long story short, you wanna have some of that on hand uh, so that you can keep your house safe to enter and exit during, uh, during a heavy snowfall. And having lived here for most of my life, except for that glorious five years when I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, and didn't have to worry about snow, um, you know, the best rule of thumb, especially when we're having, and when you know we're gonna have a, a heavy snowfall, is just get out there and shovel early and often. I mean, it's way easier to go out three times and shovel two inches than it is to try and like hoist six inches, you know, a six inch snowfall. I mean, that's when people like, you know, that's when people can have heart attacks. I mean, it's not worth dying over a, a snowfall. Just get out there, get it shoveled and, and uh, and get the salt down so it's safe to, to walk up and down your sidewalk and up to your porch. And specifically regarding sidewalks, um, every city that I know of, I don't think there's a city that doesn't have this ordinance, but within 24 hours of the snowfall ending, you could actually get a ticket if you don't have your sidewalk shoveled. So just make sure you stay on top of it. Um, all you really need to do is like one, you know, shovel length through, but realistically, I mean, don't be that guy. Uh, just get out there and just, you know, like I said, every, every inch or two of snowfall, just get out there and shovel it, maintain it, and then you won't have to worry about it. And then this is the question I've gotten more than any other question from people that are moving into our area and just aren't quite sure what to deal with. You know, I've had people that, that didn't move from areas where there were, or that moved from areas where there wasn't heavy snowfall, didn't really know what to expect. And I've gotten this several times of, you know, when we do get a massive snowfall, like, how do you get to work? 
Well, the real answer is when we have a heavy snowfall like that, you won't get to work because you can't. Like you just won't be able to leave. It won't be, you won't be even able to travel in certain instances. Uh, what, it dep doesn't even matter if it's safe to travel or not. You won't be able to get down your street to, to even get anywhere. So my best advice is when we, we're gonna know ahead of time when we're gonna have a, a, a heavy snowfall, just go, I, I hesitate even to say stock up, just have a couple days worth of supplies so you don't run out of toilet paper or milk or whatever. Um, you know, don't, don't go crazy and be that guy that, you know, buys, you know, two months supply of toilet paper when we're gonna, you know, have six inches of snow. Just don't do it. But, uh, you know, it, it's not a bad idea to have just a few things on hand in case you need them. Uh, you know, in the best case scenario, we're expecting a big snowfall. We don't get one, then you just have extra stuff. So that's my, my rule of thumb as someone who's lived here for a long, long time. That's the best way to go. And I should add too, because this is kind of new. Um, don't be that guy that relies on like DoorDash or Uber Eats when we have like some massive snowfall. Like it's not fair to those guys to you know risk their life to to bring you a you know some ramen or whatever. Just don't just don't do it. You know, just have have the supplies on hand and and just be a good neighbor. And then number five, it's you know easy to overlook, but we've got a ton of fun winter activities here. So I mean. Especially, you know, we live in like the flattest place in the United States pretty much, but even here we've got several ski hills where you can go skiing or snowboarding. Um, you know, we've got plenty of places like parks and stuff with cross country ski trails, ice skating, you know, ice fishing is a big thing here. Um, you know, winter hiking even. There's just all kinds of fun winter activities that you can, you know, access, you know, from anywhere in the, in the metro area and, and be there in relatively short order. And then I'm not even gonna get into hockey because that's around here that's more of a year-round activity anyway, but there are about a hundred ice rinks all around town that you can get to. So there's plenty to do in the winter. Just gotta bundle up. You know, as they say, there's no such thing as bad weather, there's only poor clothing choices. So make sure you layer up and uh, and go out and have fun. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate making these videos. I enjoy it. I love hearing the getting the feedback from you guys. And anything I can do to help, if you ever have any questions, if there's something that I didn't touch on in this video or something else that you want to know, reach out anytime. My direct line is 586-491-5622. You can also reach me at 248-561-6155. Shoot me an email at dwarenka at m1realty.net. Smoke signal carrier, pigeon, messenger on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, I'm easy to get a hold of and I respond quick. So until next week, thank you so much for watching, guys. And we'll talk soon. Have a great one.